The UN Security Council has struggled to respond in any forceful way to Russia's attacks on Ukraine, chiefly because of Russia's veto power in the Council. Now, as the war has stretched into its third month, the Council's presidency is being led by U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield. I sat down with the Ambassador to talk about the U.S. agenda on the Ukraine crisis and her visit to a humanitarian crossing at the Turkish border with Syria. I'm Frank Uciardo, and this is TRT World One-on-One. -on -One. U.S. UN Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, thank you for joining us here on TRT World. You have a huge month ahead of you as President of the Security Council, particularly in these challenging times for the United Nations. I wanted to start by asking you about your trip to Turkey's border with Syria. Apparently, this is your second visit there. So I previously made a, a trip to uh, the border area, visiting uh, the refugee communities living uh, uh, around the border with Syria, meeting with uh, UN agencies so that we could last year uh, get uh, agreement on an extension of the uh, Bab El Hawa um, border crossing. And we were successful in getting unanimous Security Council support for that extension. So I am planning a second trip, as you know, uh, this uh, weekend to the uh, Turkish-Syrian border uh, to update myself on the situation there, but also to prepare for the uh, uh, extension of the resolution uh, that has to be extended on July 10th of, of, of this year. Uh, we know that that border crossing, as well as other border crossings that have already been closed, provide necessary and urgent humanitarian assistance to the Syrian people. We want to ensure that that assistance uh, continues. Turkey has played an essential role uh, allowing uh, the UN to uh, work from the Turkish side of the border. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank uh, uh, Turkey, but uh, thank the Turkish people uh, for hosting uh, refugees. This work could not be done without the hospitality and the generosity of the Turkish people and the Turkish government. Ambassador, as you know, Turkey hosts more than 3.7 million Syrian refugees and now some 85,000 refugees from Ukraine. So you are dealing with Russia on two refugee situations, a border crossing in Syria and evacuations from Ukraine, where Russia has presented obstacles for the UN and refugees. You know, uh, what has been uh, helpful is that uh, the Turkish government, uh, your president, has been engaging uh, with the Russians and with the Ukrainians and trying to facilitate a diplomatic end uh, to this horrific war. Uh, and we support all of uh, uh, those efforts to find a diplomatic solution uh, to this conflict. This conflict in Ukraine has produced more than 10 million. I think the figures are probably over 11 million displaced people and refugees. And uh, the only solution uh, at this moment is to end that conflict uh, now. Uh, but again, Turkey is dealing with uh, that conflict as well as the situation on its own border uh, with Syria. Recently, Ukrainian lawmakers passed a resolution declaring Russia as a sponsor of state terrorism because of its invasion of Ukraine. Now, is this something on the agenda for the Biden administration as well? Of course, it would put Russia on the same list with Iran, Cuba, Syria, and North Korea. We have been clear that what we see happening in Ukraine are war crimes. Uh, what we see happening in Ukraine are uh, humanitarian and human rights atrocities. Uh, and we have supported all of uh, the efforts so far uh, to collect evidence to prepare for prosecutions against those who have committed uh, these crimes. Now, to be clear, do you believe Russia should be labeled as a sponsor of state terrorism? You know, we will uh, continue to keep a laser focus on what the Russians are doing. We will continue to apply 
uh, extraordinary pressure on the Russians, and we will continue our efforts at isolating them uh, at, in the Security Council as well as uh, around the globe. And as you noted, we've been extraordinarily successful uh, in that effort. Uh, 141 people voted to condemn Russia in the General Assembly. 140 voted to support Ukraine's need for humanitarian assistance. And then we won the vote uh, suspending Russia from the Human Rights Council. We will continue to push back against uh, Russia's uh, disinformation and misinformation campaign. Every time they bring an issue before the Security Council, it gives us an opportunity to highlight uh, the atrocities that they are committing. It gives us an opportunity to further isolate them. Now, during a recent interview I did with Ukraine's U.N. ambassador, he blamed the U.N. and NATO for not acting sooner and not acting right after Russia's annexation of Crimea. Basically, has the international community been ignoring these things for eight years? If you look back, the United States was raising our concerns about this situation months before the Russians invaded Ukraine. President Biden had a meeting with President Putin. Uh, he spoke to him on several occasions. He warned him uh, that the consequences of him taking uh, uh, such an action uh, would be strongly felt uh, through sanctions like they have never seen before. And we see those sanctions being imposed on them now. Uh, Secretary Blinken was meeting with Foreign Minister Lavrov and even had a meeting scheduled with him the day they attacked. And then I think most importantly, on the day they attacked, we were having an emergency meeting of the Security Council. Uh, so we have not ignored uh, and we did not delay our response uh, to uh, the situation. Uh, we were calling out the Russians months before. We were galvanizing and unifying uh, the community uh, for, uh, for months before this uh, happened. And, uh, you know, I will say we even voiced our concerns uh, way back uh, from 2014 uh, when uh, the uh, Russians uh, moved into Crimea and took actions in Donbass. So this has been a long time in coming, but uh, I, I think that the record shows that we, we've raised uh, concerns about this. You mentioned Secretary of State Anthony Blinken a few moments ago, and I understand he will be here at the UN to host some signature events during your presidency. Tell us about that. So one of our key uh, events uh, during this month of uh, our presidency uh, will be a focus on food insecurity uh, and how that impacts peace and security around the globe. Secretary Blinken uh, will host a uh, a ministerial, uh, a call to action on food security, and invite ministers from uh, various countries who have been impacted by the war in Ukraine and food insecurity issues. Ambassador, in closing, I wanted to ask you about being a diplomat. Since you began your career, a lot of young women are looking up to you as a role model. What message can you give to them to follow in your footsteps? Because it wasn't easy for you. I am honored to be considered a role model. Uh, when I talk to young African Americans, young women uh, around the world, and I see how they view me, it makes it even more important for me uh, to carry out my job in a way that shows the importance of leadership, uh, shows the importance of humility, uh, the importance of being able to communicate and communicating means not just my telling other governments what I want them to hear, but hearing from them what their uh, priorities are. United States UN Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, thank you for joining us here on TRT World. Thank you very much.